Thank you for tuning in to the Student Organization Summit. Make sure to follow us on social media and check out the many other videos on this channel about working with and advising student organizations. And now, please enjoy your workshop. Hello, thank you for joining us this morning. We are from Purdue University and our presentation, Goldmine, Alumni Assistance for Student Organizations, will cover the last few years on our campus and how our alumni engagement and assistance for student organizations have helped us increase resources, improve student development, and create new opportunities for student involvement. Our presentation will be told from two different vantage points. The first is from a collaboration between the Alumni Association and the Fraternity Sorority and Cooperative Life Office. And the second will provide an overview of what our Student Activities and Organizations Office did to add an alumni relations position. First, let's start with some introductions. My name is Jimmy Cox and I'm the Director of Student Alumni Programs for the Purdue for Life Foundation, which houses our development and alumni relations teams. I'm a graduate of Purdue from 2009 and have been working here for six years tomorrow. In my role for the engagement team, I manage student programs, recent graduate initiatives, and alumni relations for fraternities, sororities, and cooperative houses. And I'm Margie Jones, the current Assistant Director of Student Involvement. I work in our Student Activities and Organizations Office that oversees our over 900 student organizations. I've been at Purdue for over 16 years. During my time at Purdue, I've worked with four of our legacy student organizations, including the Purdue Student Union Board, which is an all-campus programming board, Masters, an organization that brings alumni back for a three-day program, Rising Professionals that brings in younger alumni for a two-day program, and Mortarboard, a senior honor society. And I'm Zoe Stoudy, and I also work in the Student Activities and Organizations Department um, alongside Margie, and I am a Student Affairs Specialist, Alumni Relations Liaison. Um, so I have been with Purdue for about nine months, so I started back at the end of February, and I help to co-advise for Old Masters, Rising Professionals, and Mortar Board. And I also help work with our other organizations on efforts of fundraising, endowments, and alumni outreach. Before we dive into the presentation, here are some quick facts about Purdue. We are a four-year public land-grant and Research One university located in West Lafayette, Indiana. We have approximately 43,000 students on campus, including graduate and professional students. Our living alumni base is approximately 550,000. Next, these are our two key takeaways from today's presentation. Participants will understand the benefits of connecting students to alumni, and participants will be able to, to better develop a long-term strategy of involving alumni with your student organizations. While all of our colleges and universities have vastly different demographics and environments, we hope you take away some creative thoughts and ideas back to your roles. We're now ready to share our stories. For simplicity's sake, we had divided the presentation into two parts. I will present first, followed by Margie and Zoe. We will then end with some key points and questions to take back. With any change, it's important to state the background. For my part at the Alumni Association, while we focus on alumni engagement, as a student programs director, I am very intentional about ensuring students have a strong connection to our office so that it's built before they leave campus. For fraternities, sororities, and cooperative houses, I saw an opportunity to work with them to connect them to their alumni more intentionally. Even without assistance from the Alumni Association, they are already communicating and engaging with their alumni base. What I thought our office could add was assistance in requesting alumni lists, help with newsletters, and ideas on engagement activities. Our office would basically act as a consultant service for the chapters and houses. Outside of the students, and more importantly from our, excuse me, for our office, this presented an opportunity for alumni to get involved as advisors and volunteers. There was already a system in place for that, but the Fraternity and Sorority and Cooperative Life Office wanted to greatly expand the number of advisors and training for them. It's why they approached our office about a funding partnership. 
Their office wanted more advisors to serve as, quote, adults in the room. The perfect world scenario was for each chapter or house to have three advisors, one to serve as president, one to serve the recruitment chair, and another to advise the new member educator. Additionally, there were fundraising goals that the office had, and to fundraise, you need to engage first. By the way, and just for clarification, you've heard me say the words cooperative houses. At Purdue, we have a system of organizations on campus that arose out of the Home Economics Department about 60 years ago. These organizations started as women's houses and then some men's houses followed. The best way to explain it is that cooperative houses are very similar to fraternities and sororities, but they do not have a national presence. So to recap, the strategic goals for a partnership between Purdue Alumni Association and the Fraternity and Sorority and Cooperative Life Office were recruit more advisors and volunteers, create and provide training resources to chapter advisors, and then assist student alumni chairs in developing an alumni relations program for their chapter or house. To help accomplish our strategic goals, the Dean of Students Office decided to invest an annual amount to help cover the partial cost of an additional employee for the Alumni Association. This employee would help cover some of my work, and then in return, 20% of my time was spent working for the Fraternity Sorority and Cooperative Life Office. Additionally, the Alumni Association provided a small programming budget of $7,000 that went towards alumni meetings, training resources and logistics, and miscellaneous program costs. Some of the work I focused on to help accomplish our goals was curating content and sending two alumni newsletters a year to communicate success stories and recruit volunteers, provide two to three training seminars a year for advisors, hosting two training seminars a year for student alumni chairs, and meeting in person or virtually with alumni to discuss volunteer opportunities. This last one had me working from home one day a week. With having so many alumni in Indiana, there were always opportunities for me to meet for coffee or a quick bite to talk with alumni in person. I'm happy to report that we were able to accomplish all of our goals the biggest of which was recruiting more volunteers and advisors. On that specific note, some of you may ask how we went about recruiting advisors. While a public school like Purdue cannot force advisors on a fraternity, sorority, or cooperative house, all of our chapters and houses were happy to have help in identifying alumni assistance. If one of my meetings led to someone raising their hand, quote unquote, to volunteer, then I simply connected that person to their lead advisor, which was on file in our office. At the end of the second year, that led to our advisor list, which has three advisors for each organization. So you're talking about 230 advisors on file. Uh, we had a valid email for every advisor that we have. Some other success stories for us were hosting our largest ever advisor training with 70 in attendance, creating a new alumni engagement program called Coming Home, this program brings back a C-suite level alum, someone that's a vice president, CEO, et cetera, for their organization or company, for a period of two to five days to network with students and discuss strategic initiatives and ideas with university leaders. And then lastly, annually, I had between three to five organizations personally reach out for assistance with alumni relations. Fortunately, we did not encounter a lot of challenges, but there were some. The first challenge was obvious from the outset. A split position like this can be a challenge depending on how many initiatives an office has going on. It took the first year to really determine how I was to split my time in the best strategic way possible. For example, I didn't start working from home with outside meetings for about 10 months. Another challenge, which was a good one, was the amount of volunteers we had. Not everyone can be an advisor, and you don't want some people to serve in that role, so eventually we had more volunteers than we did opportunities. This is where we began looking at creating new programs such as Coming Home. A third challenge is something all of us can relate to. Turnover with student organizations is not always handled well. While our chapters and houses increase their engagement and communication with alumni, we often had to reteach things each year because information would get lost in transition. 
I cannot tell you how many times I had to coach students on how to request alumni lists. This last slide relates back to the successes, as it shows from a number standpoint what our impact was. This is how we've told our story to different stakeholders we've had, which have helped in communicating our desire to continue working together and keep going with our new programs. While the paid partnership ended this past summer, the three-year deal that was in place was successful in our eyes. Our offices have decided to continue working together in a more limited fashion, but one that is still strategic and beneficial for both of our portfolios. At this point, I'll hand it over to my colleagues to discuss their part of the story. Now we are going to provide some background context as to how we came to the decision to create the alumni liaison position, including what the job entails, and then talk about a few key stakeholders that we knew would be critical for the person in this role to develop relationships with. Currently, our office includes 12 individuals, eight full-time, two administrative, one student worker, and a graduate student. As I mentioned before, we oversee the 900 plus active student organizations. That can range from fraternities and sororities to residence hall clubs to the chess club, some of which are directly advised by staff members in our office, including Zoe and myself. Each of these groups requires a different approach and a level of need from our office. Some have their own prospective alumni boards, while others have no interaction at all with their alumni. Through our work with student organizations and their alumni, we had identified a few key stakeholders. Those included the University Development Office and the Purdue Alumni Association. Both of these entities are separate from the university, however, work hand in hand with Purdue, overseeing activities including stewardship, gifts and donations, access to alumni data, and overall alumni relations. The development office manages all of the endowments and gifts made by our alumni, and they also oversee the annual giving day known as Purdue Day of Giving. We also work with them through our alumni request form. Organizations submit this form through our office to obtain alumni data that they can then use for newsletters, emails, or to send invitations to events. The Alumni Association, on the other hand, specifically focuses on connecting our alumni directly back to the university. They have most recently created some alumni networks, some of which are directly tied to our student organizations. We felt that in order to move forward and further develop these relationships, we really needed a specific staff person that could focus on this task. The liaison role was created through looking at our departmental strategic goals, which helped to build the foundation for the position description. In 2018, one of our goals was to create a bridge between our student organizations and their alumni. We wanted to have a better understanding as to which organizations were interacting with our alumni and on what level. From there, the position was created and it was filled in the summer of 2018 in order to help expand our presence on campus and to assist our organizations through this work. The primary purpose was to create one point of contact for our organizations. This position would be that initial contact and this would help connect the orgs to that next step, whether it be their alumni or to the development office, for example. Through conversations with our students, we found that understanding the protocols and, nav and navigating the system were often a source of frustration for them. So we wanted to develop ways to create transparency and efficiencies within our processes. We found that the relationship with our alumni to be mutually beneficial. In that our alumni often want to engage with current students and that these type of engagements create connections back to the university which in turn makes the alumni more likely to give. So how did we invest? As I mentioned before, um, this was based off of our departmental goals. The position was created in the summer of 2018 and the work began that fall. The directive was to create trainings, 
connections, and individual plans within some of our legacy organizations. Unfortunately, the first person to fill the role did leave the university in the fall of 2019, which did create some stagnation and pause on some of the great work that had already been done. However, I'm now happy to report that we are up and running with Zoe taking on the position earlier this spring, and we are already well on our way to creating more of those synergies. We knew one key way to engage our organizations would be through trainings. We began with one large training in the spring of 2018 that focused on the basics of interacting with our alumni, which also included Jimmy as one of our presenters. This included breakout sessions, which were led by campus partners, um, including topics such as stewardship, endowments, and then Purdue Day of Giving. The position also started to develop some relationships with organizations that had alumni related roles. So some of these things included in person meetings with students, um, general emails with tips and tricks, and really just information sharing amongst the organizations. With some of the legacy groups, we helped them also create strategic plans that were specific for their organization and their interactions with alumni. Some of these ideas included creating alumni networks um, through Facebook and LinkedIn, establishing alumni roles within the organization, and then creating a consistent engagement calendar that would include things like social media spotlights, post, and providing opportunities for our alumni to connect back to campus, whether in person or virtually. Since the creation of this position, we've had many successes in the growth of student organizations interacting with their alumni. Many of our legacy organizations have plans for reoccurring communication and outreach with their alumni. Our legacy organizations are student organizations that have been established for a long time and hold a high connection to the university. We have been able to work with the legacy organizations on campus to create concrete plans of connecting with their alumni through scheduled newsletters and outreach through Facebook and LinkedIn groups like Margie has just mentioned. We have been able to increase the number of student organizations that have representatives in the alumni relations role. Our registration process is a rolling process where student orgs can re-register at any time there's a change of leadership or advisor. Since an alumni relations position is not required, the number of student organizations that do register with a member in that leadership role is low. When I started working at Purdue back in March, we had about 32 organizations out of our over 900 that registered with a representative in the alumni relations position, and that number continues to increase and grow as groups continue to re-register. Another success we have had is within creating relationships with our campus partners. In order to help our students gain the information and resources needed to connect with their alumni, we work with offices who hold that information, such as the University Development Office and the Purdue Alumni Association. Cultivating these relationships has been beneficial as it's provided us with knowing that we have their support in helping students to reach out and make new connections with their alumni. With successes always comes challenges. A challenge that we have faced is constant changes in leadership, both within the university level and the student level. Like I previously talked about with cultivating relationships with campus partners, that success can also turn into a weakness when the leadership changes over. We have been successful with growing our relationship and moving in a good direction, and then have come to a roadblock when having to start that relationship over again. We also face similar changes of leadership within the student organizations with constant change yearly of new students taking on new leadership roles and having to retrain them on the operations like Jimmy mentioned earlier with his groups. Understanding campus politics and the way other offices operate is also a challenge we have faced. Since the University Development Office and Purdue Alumni Association are separate entities from Purdue, it has been crucial for me to understand the structure of who they are, who the key stakeholders are, and what benefits come from working together before I help the student orgs work with them. There are challenges with understanding how other offices outside of the one you work in operate, but in the end, learning how campus partners operate and their policies that are in place are crucial for your students' success. Along with students, 
We have also faced those same frustrations through the processes, like Margie had referred to earlier, which is why we're working on new ways to efficiently teach and provide the information to our student groups. Going off of that, accessing the information has not been an easy task for our students. The University Development Office is the gatekeeper of alumni information, and we have to go through them when requesting the information for the student groups. To ensure we're following the protocol of the University Development Office, we require our students to submit a form along with a copy of the message that they're planning to send out. We require both of those as the Development Office likes to track how often the university is reaching out to alumni and on what topics. The process has been challenging due to the amount of times it takes to process the form, due to blackout periods that students cannot contact alumni during, and if the development office thinks that there's been too much communication going out to that specific demographic of alumni. We have found that many of our student groups have strayed away from connecting with their alumni due to the number of steps it takes for them to receive the information. However, we are working on increasing their engagement to make an easier process. Two major issues we have faced with students following the protocols is not knowing that they need to request the contact information of their alumni and not following up with the development office of who unsubscribes from their communications. With students not knowing that they need to complete both of those steps, it can affect the university development office's records and can ultimately affect the relationship between the alumni and the university for future. Like Margie mentioned earlier, our alumni workshops have been focused on different aspects of alumni involvement and connection. In 2019, we hosted an in-person session where students came to hear from multiple campus partners on tips and tricks of how to connect and communicate with their alumni. In 2020, we had to pivot to a, plat a virtual platform for our trainings where we had 18 in attendance. With the changes to virtual, we knew students were being overloaded with a lot of information and multiple virtual events occurring, so we were pleased with the turnout up for the circumstances. Currently, we are starting to plan trainings for our spring semester and are expecting a higher turnout. Over the past few years, we have increased the number of student organizations involvement in Purdue Day of Giving, which is held annually in April. In 2018, we had 118 student organizations participate, raising an overall total of $138, $138,000, excuse me. We have increased both of those numbers since, having 249 student organizations registered for the 2020 Purdue Day of Giving, with an overall total of $162,000. The student organizations put a lot of focus on their alumni outreach during the time of Purdue Day of Giving, and we always see an increase of alumni information requests coming through during that time. We're working with student groups to plan more frequent outreach to their alumni throughout the year rather than just during Purdue Day of Giving. Of the over 900 student organizations, this year we have 65 who are re officially registered with a student in the alumni relations leadership role. A goal of ours is to help our organizations understand the benefit that the position holds and increase the number of student groups that have a recognized position for alumni relations. So what could this mean for you? Listed on the slide, we have some questions and thoughts to take back to your campus and your role to ponder, discuss, to see if there are any changes or different ideas you can implement back on your campus. For example, what are your challenges? Can alumni play a role in helping to solve them? Do you currently have a relationship with or partner on anything with your alumni and or development offices? What kinds of resources do you have? Will solving the challenge require more personnel? Connecting alumni with students can help with networking, career development, and provide more support in the form of adults in the room. Getting alumni involved with student life facing problems and services can lead to increased resources via money for scholarships, endowments, and or campus programs. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and for attending the conference. We hope you can join us in the Zoom room if you have any follow-up questions or discussion items. That link can be found back at the schedule, or you can also follow up via email with us. Thank you again, have a great rest of your day, and good luck. Thanks for tuning in to the Student Organization Summit. If you're watching this live, feel free to reference the schedule for the day 
and use the link in the schedule to access a Q&A room where you can ask questions or chat with the presenters from this workshop. If they didn't list a Q&A link or you're watching this video after the event, thank you for your interest in the Student Organization Summit.